February in Torquay and at the Babacombe Theatre where it's not so much an end of the pier show as an edge of the cliff one. Preparations are already underway for one of the country's longest running summer shows. Over the years this theatre has been the training ground for stars like Bruce Forsyth and Roy Hudd and it's a tradition which is being continued as each summer young performers learn their craft here under the watchful eye of producer and director Colin Matthews. In addition to the established artists, auditions are already underway for local children and around 50 of these young hopefuls are being put through their paces. With mum and dads watching optimistically, God knows there could well be tears before bedtime. Confronted by a sea of leotards, this is where Colin's experienced eye comes into practice. Some have more charm than ability. All this youthful enthusiasm has left choreographer Sarah Roach breathless and full of admiration. Absolutely fantastic. Much better than me. I just wish I had their energy. <laughs> it's killing me, hence the EVM. Boy, I need lots of it. The regulations on children's working hours, coupled with the fact that the show's running for 10 months, means that Sarah's looking for several groups. By law, they're only allowed to do a certain amount of performances. Hence, this first two groups we've got, we've got eight children in total. Um, they'll just be doing the show from the beginning of February until about May, and then I'll come in and do the next lot of eight children, and then a bit later on, there, about August time, I've got more rehearsals with another section of eight children, so hence that's why I'm like this. I should be a lot thinner by August. <laughs> Where's that kettle when you need it? Is that caffeine? Well, Colin may need something a little stronger than coffee when he sees what the gas board are doing outside the theatre. Their decision to dig up the road has meant that the supervisor has been summoned to the office to explain the lack of consultation. Can you, yeah. you advise me who makes a decision that can block someone's access off without uh, advising them? And what arrogance allows someone to do that? Team on site, usually. No, no, someone's made a decision to do this work. Oh, yeah, but we Without should... advising us. And, uh, who can no, do I, did, that? I did post a letter advising of the work. No, advising the work to be done in the area, which yeah. was a, a photocopy of a letter that obviously sent out to other people. You didn't That's say right, you were yeah. coming to block off our access. Well, we shouldn't have blocked it. You, you didn't are, say are, when we you're going to start, when you're going to finish. Someone decided they were going to dig up our road here. Someone up oh. there. We need to know who that is so we can write to them. What the hell's all this about? This is because you've blocked our access and you've stopped us working. It's over the top, it? No, it's not at all. Making decisions that affect people's lives without letting them know about it. However, in a short time, the problem's resolved. Well, what a nightmare. I mean, as if I didn't have enough to think about. Here I am, trying to get work done, trying to rehearse, and all of a sudden there's noise, there's pneumatic drills, there's acts saying we can't get in, we can't park, they're late, I'm shouting at them, they're saying well, it's not their fault, uh, and we didn't know anything about it. It happened just all of a sudden. The show's lead singer is 16-year-old local girl Jolene, who's overcome partial deafness. But today she's forgotten a vital piece of equipment. I've been wearing hearing aid, but I stopped wearing it when I went to uh, secondary school. And because uh, I thought the kids would take the mickey out of me, 
and uh, I started wearing it again for my singing because I can't pitch at all without my hearing aid and I can't sing without it and today it's just proven it really. I forgot my hearing aids for the rehearsals and uh, I'm finding it really, really hard. You've got you let you let it go, yeah. but you can. I mean, in a few weeks' time, you'll be holding it so long you you yeah. won't even get into the next phrase. Going, get off! <laughs> That's lovely. Well done. Have a cup of tea, I think. Now we're in. Everyone's coming here. Already in the kitchen, comedian Matt Slack and impressionist Paul Burling are working on their comedy routines. Right. So opening Irish Duke. Is it known? Is it known ever? No. Uh, there's no... Uh, Wild Rover? Uh, Wild Rover. No, it's, it's called the Irish Rover, the Wild Rover. Wild Rover. No, nay, nether, no, nay, nether, no more. In the auditorium, a special delivery has arrived. Yeah, you can tell this has been done up by the Irish, can't you? Yeah. Nobody's listening to that, sir. While most of the costumes are designed and made by the theatre's wardrobe department, sometimes it's necessary to purchase special outfits. Who's that, sir? These are the costumes for the leprechaun sketch. That's a shillelagh. Stick me. <laughs> Matt's main concern is how to get into it. So I have to put a t-shirt on so it doesn't slip back forward, you know, so the shoulders stay back, the arms fit, because it's not a perfect fit in the outfit. It sort of tends to hang forward. So I've got to whack a t-shirt on. Then there's a certain way of doing it. I've got to put my collar on, which has got the white collar and the tie. Then uh, I put yeah I've already got the knee I put the knee pads on <coughs> over my jeans. Then you climb in from the side <coughs> like a sleeping bag. The zips at the side. See, it's on the half right. See, this bloody seat. Half through. And then because the zip's only like that bloody long, you've got to try and get in. And I've ripped it actually now. I shouldn't really say that, but I'm gonna rip. And then just try and get in. And then then you put your hands in. And then you forget to do the zip up, so you've got to do the zip first. Then put your hat on. All right. Oh, my hat's gone duff. And that's it. Simple. I'll have to do a bit more, and then if you can. Um, <laughs> they did on that. It's too. It's, it's, well, as long as it stays on. All right. Your stick come off, isn't it? Yeah. Do your hands not go in the shoes properly? I don't think <laughs> 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 <That's> <laughs> Already the comedy rapport's beginning to emerge, much to Paul's relief. Yeah, I've known Matt for quite some time, um, but we've never actually worked together, and it's different knowing somebody and working with them. Because um, at first I think we were a bit worried because we could worry about clashing. Because it makes me take them. <laughs> so, having got the measure of each other, it's now time to explore the comic possibilities of the costumes. <laughs> We've got on really, really well actually. Um, takes a while I think to get to know each other on a professional basis as well as a personal basis. And we sit around and chat and talk about everything under the sun. Now we're getting brilliant. I think I'd like to think we got on really well anyway, you can never tell. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting used to it, mate. Because I got soul. Right, two leprechauns ticked off the list. Stage yeah, managers Ali and so Dominic, who are usually yeah, responsible for making sure insane. the show runs smoothly, oh, are today concentrating on the props and costumes. Uh, I've given um, Dominic mine. I should right. be here in the morning if you want. Um, um, once you start doing it, I'll pop yeah, down and we'll just have a look at each. Um, Deep in consultation with Colin, they're trying to persuade right. him to raid the petty cash tin. Today we're looking for all sorts of props for the um, routine with Jolene and Matt, which is baby, it's cold outside. Success! He's parted with the money. So the search begins. 
need to find a fur coat, a fur hat, a sledge and a scarf which should all complete the uh, routine, all the pieces we need for it to make it more realistic. And we're hoping to find those in charity shops so they shouldn't cost too much because the fur coat, you know, these days aren't that easy to get hold of. Um, we're just going to pop into Torquay Town to see what we can find. Mission accomplished, they head back with all the props to complete yet another routine. And we found a really old sled, it's great, it's just like an antique. In the costume department here we found a fur coat, which is perfect, it was used last year for the cat section. And Colin seems really pleased with it, I think it's going to be a success. But every coat has a troublesome lining. Bloody who stitched this? Oh, I'm just... <laughs> For the first nice. time, no, nice. Colin sees more possibilities. Um, if you can sort of do that up to yeah. his chest, right, before you grab I mean, hold of it. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, below stage, there are rumblings of discontent about the ballet costumes. These swans, led by Sarah, have had their feathers ruffled. They're concerned about their lack of fine plumage. We look awful in them. So we still hate them with passion. Since dress rehearsal we've hated them and we still do. We keep begging, begging for costumes, like nice pretty ones that we can kind of cover up here. But um, no, they're not terribly flattering and we all sort of go into bad moods when we put on the tutu, so... You know, still loathe it. It seems the feelings about the tutus are unanimous. We look like giant babies, like those perverse people that... Sorry, you didn't say that. No, those, those adult babies that go for sexual things. <laughs> you know how they have those places where the women yeah, dress them up and feed them and, you know, big 40-year-old <laughs> men and I nothing. Mean, I don't feel very balletic in my bunny outfit. I feel a bit old. I just look like an elephant. A fairy that's fallen off the tree at Christmas. <laughs> There's always one routine you dislike and I'm afraid it's a ballet for all of us. Staging these shows for 15 years, Colin knows exactly what his audience is like. Always in the show there's something old, something new, something borrowed, nothing blue. That's why our productions are so popular. If some of our audience were to go back to their hotels and tell them that the comedy's blue, then the word's likely to get around that it's not suitable. And that could jeopardise the future of the show. Time to check how Paul's rehearsals are going. Oh. 
three and four, thirty-four. Six and two, half uh, Well, I started impressions when I was a kid, um, even at primary school, when I was about seven or something like that. I used to do um, the obvious ones at the time of Frank Spencer, etc. But it's, it's, it's attracting people with, as friends and stuff, and I've still got obviously friends from when I was a kid. Well, yes, now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to attribute to three of my favourite characters. And first of all, who remembers the Carry On films? Okay, thank you, madam. Here we go then. Or Earth, made from Earth. One day there was a sex star eagle flying around looking for a bit of. One of the things I always, always remember is my dad telling me off for doing impressions. He used to tell me off, you know, if you're going to speak, speak properly, sort of thing, you know. But now he's more proud of me than anybody else because I've made a bit, you know, made a career out of it. Oh, I am a little dove and I've had a bit of love. And I'm obviously, I have to do Norman Wisdom, uh, Kenneth Williams, etc. But um, I do um, always try to stick new ones in as well that they would probably know. <laughs> Got Tony Blair and stuff like that, which I'm doing and doing, which I've put in the put in the show now as well, which works because they all know Tony Blair. And I'm working on Dale Winton and stuff like that. So you, you just got to keep moving and moving and moving. Hi, Smart. Just coming. That's changing this. So the artist rehearsed, and now to put the backstage team through their paces. Hold it. Hold it. Go front tabs. Go front tabs. Early. Already, tensions are beginning to show. Can you not hear me? C can you can you hear me? Um, can you not hear me? He's starting to get stressed out now. He said the F word. Do you hear him? Yeah. Really frightened me. Miss the three o'clock photo call. It's on your sheets. But despite all the problems, Colin remains ever optimistic. We only had to stop because uh, a mic went down, which is most unusual. Normally there's some other big problem, which, um, you know, logistics or cues, normally tab problems and so on. So that was very good. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from the Emerald Isle, it's the Little People! Finally, time to put that leprechaun routine to the test in front of a live audience. You know what? Oh, I've got to tell you last night. Look at the lovely ladies. Oh, lovely pulled, ladies. Peggy's I pulled, love Peggy. I, mean, I pulled last night. I yeah. did. She took me home. She said, Matt. No, she said, it's Murphy. Murphy. <laughs> get into she character said, for God's sake. She said, <laughs> Murphy. She said, make love to me. Don't worry. I won't get pregnant. My husband's had a vasectomy. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> anyway, let's do that thing. We're going to do that tap dance stuff, like that Michael Flatchley said. <laughs> Was he in that uh, show, Whistle Down the Wind? That's the one. <laughs> I think they're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, live at the Babacom Theatre. Here we go. It's our version of River Dance. <laughs> may have loved it, but Matt still has reservations. Uh, yeah, when we first did it, it was superb. It brought the house down. I think because we've got used to doing it, you know? And the initial shock of the, woo, you know, um, we get we, we got used to the laughter, so I think we've eased up with it a bit. We've got relaxed with doing it. Um, and because we know that we're kneeling, um, and we know it's not real, you forget that it's the first time they've seen it. 
Okay. So it's not as good as what it should be, but it needs work. It needs a lot more work, like everything does. No more. One more time! And it's no name never. No name never, no more. And that's the No more rollers. No never. The successful boys and girls who made it through the auditions are busily getting to know each other. Unlike their adult counterparts, they like their costumes. Are they as flattering about their parents? I like my mum because I like how she does my hair and I like how she makes costumes. I like my dad because he helps me with my homework. <laughs> my dad, every time he's off on his holidays, he always breaks his shaver. So now he's got all his hair that comes out and he looks like a toilet cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> My mum and dad in one room and my dad's always snoring so we've luckily got this spare room that we usually use when people come to stay. So when my dad snores, she gives him a push with a pillow and then goes into the other room. <laughs> and then he wakes up in the morning to find her gone. <laughs> so, fun over, time to get down to work. In the, the dressing room, Colin's still busily fine-tuning. Sort of, no, Time to turn his attention to the show's speciality act, twins Spencer and Lee. Well, Their hat-juggling routine is cause of concern. Can, unless there's no more tricks we can do with them, so I can't see how we can improve them that way. I mean, we, what we've done, <coughs> we've slightly changed it a bit. With rather than this um, going from trick to trick to trick, we're yeah. sort of we're, we're stretching a couple of bits, right. a little bit longer, putting a little bit more dialogue in yeah. to sort of give it a little bit di different it. dimension, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and it, it seems to be okay. It's nice and easy for us to come on with just yeah. a, a few flicks of the hat, a, a few throws sort of thing. Yeah. So it gets us on nice. Yeah. No, I just for us, feel so. from your point of view, you know, mm. it's you're not getting the yeah. get ready to get on and, and never will get the sort of mm. applause you deserve because it's not perceived as difficult. Yeah, it's not sort of though it is, is it? Yeah. even though it is more difficult. Yeah. Than that flashes a bit. Can't so the twins sharpen up their act. From last year doing the tennis rackets, we thought, well, we can juggle knives, and it's a uh, same routine. It's still juggling to us, but it, obviously it completely changes with what you're juggling. The flash goes a bit crazy, I'd say. I'd say well, the, the knives and hats are both like both new for this year, so it's a, it's a case of doing new routines because it's our second year. <laughs> That's from a chair, secondary rehearsals. <laughs> there will be a point when we'll have to. Well, the routine we do is. Uh, it's quite a lot of acrobatics in, so obviously we might still be able to do it. It's whether people want to see two old blokes jumping around. <laughs> nice to see you. Welcome to the show. At last, a chance to find yeah. out if all that work's been worth it. Matt warms up another yeah. Babacom audience.
because of me, they're going to bring out a hospital drama based on Torbay Hospital, yes. It's like the American one, ER, only it's called OOR. It's just kind of <laughs> And do you realise, if you do join the European currency, old sayings shall change overnight? For instance, we'll never ever spend a penny again. <laughs> we should all have to euronate. <laughs> You know, I bought my little nephew a, a thousand watt light bulb for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Christmas Day, he opened it up. You should have seen his face light up. It was lovely. Oh, oh. Oh. Anyway, all I ask you to do is sit back, relax, enjoy the show. And that's all you've got to do. And ladies and gentlemen, it's variety at its best because it's back in action, back in fashion. Next week, Matt and Jolene come in from the cold. Dancers show off their fabulous feet. And we witness the original Mexican rave. <laughs>